Great. We have Hurricanes coach Mario Cristobal. We'll go straight into questions. We'll start off with Susan Miller Duggan for the Miami Herald. Susan. Hi, Mario. How has uh, Inez Cooper handled these past two games, um, which were intense to say the least? I, I figure there's nothing like being thrown into the fire to grow from it. He's beyond his years. He is, uh, he's a big guy that has really adapted to the speed of the college game really well. He's physical. He's extremely smart. He's a one correction guy. Once you tell him, hey, we've got to do this a certain way, he fixes it technically and fundamentally. Um, unbelievable human being and teammate. This means a lot to him. He's everything you want in an offensive lineman. And my follow is with Wesley Besaint. Is he still growing football wise on the field and games as well as practices as much as he was a bit earlier this season when the light came on? How is his development? He's doing great. He's going to be a an elite player here at Miami and feel great about everything that he's doing and uh, his trajectory. Next, we'll go to Matt Shredell from Kane Sport. Matt? Yeah. Hey, Mario. Um, I know a lot of us have sort of hounded you and some of the players about the outside noise and this and that. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, you know, maybe some of the positives you've seen in progress of some guys, maybe some forward momentum in, in terms of how you are building things up here at Miami. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Susan mentioned a couple of guys that really stand out that are young, both Wesley Bassane and Inez Cooper, you know, guys like uh, Daryl Jackson played really well. Farai's played really well. Mitch Agude, Akeem Mesidor, you know, they've dealt with a couple of bumps and bruises here and there, but uh, Cam Kitchen's done really well. You know, James has done well when he was healthy. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are doing, that are improving and growing and maturing. And we've got to just collectively just get more and more and more development going and uh, just keep you know, improving uh, everything from our internal development to our roster acquisitions and whatnot. Just got to keep going. Our next question comes from Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Adam. Hey, Mario. Um, so Josh Gaddis mentioned the other day that you guys were down to just, you know, a handful of like fully healthy offensive linemen. I think he said like six or seven. Um, so given that, you know, injury situation, like, how big has it been for Ernest Cooper to be able to kind of step in and, and fill the fill that hole? Oh, it's an incredibly important. You know, obviously it's uh, I don't know how badly he's been wanting to play Zion, but that's a big one, right? And then uh, you know, a guy like uh, Justice was arguably your most physical player on your team, not only on your offensive line. And uh, you know, Jalen Rivers was as a performer as good as it gets, in my opinion, in the conference arguably the country, Jonathan Dennis was playing at a really, really high level. Um, those are, those are big losses. Those aren't, you know, it's not like you're losing a reserve here and there. Those are guys that were starters for you. So for a guy like Inez as a freshman to go in there and, and step in and produce at the level he's produced, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's monstrous. It's huge. Do you know if like, uh, if those guys that you mentioned, like Zion, Justice, uh, Jalen and Jonathan Dennis, you know, if they're able to return this year yet, or do you know yeah. kind of week to week or how, what's the situation with them? Jalen is week to week. He's improving daily, you know, so we're excited about him. Justice won't. Uh, Zion, I don't foresee it happening this, this season. You know, Jonathan Dennis. Either. We'll do a few more questions for Coach Cristobal. Next, we'll go to David Wilson of the Miami Herald. David. Hey, Mario, uh, I know you probably won't tell us, but do you know yet who is going to start a quarterback on Saturday? I don't know yet. Um, you're right on that part. I probably wouldn't tell <laughs> you. Um, but, you know, and I say that respectfully. You know, you know how the how it goes in terms of getting prepared for a game. But uh, we've been preparing, you know, the guys that we need to to play the best football that we can. Obviously, you know, our situation is is certainly a challenging one, but one that we're attacking as best we can. And the players have responded really well in making it work. And then just with those two younger guys, obviously it's a, you know, a tough challenge for them to, you know, potentially have to replace Tyler. They're competing with each other. Uh, one, just how are they handling this challenge? Um, and, and two, what, what can you learn about these guys for, from a situation like this? You know, and communicating with them and watching them handle themselves, handle everything from meetings to walkthroughs to practice. I've been really impressed. These guys are legitimate competitors. They're good human beings. Um, they're like high football IQ guys. They, they believe in work. Um, they're good teammates. They have the support of their teammates. So all in all, I don't think uh, there's any flinch in them. I don't think the moment's too big for either one of them, you know, but um, 
And then I'm sorry, you had a second part to the question. Yeah, I was just like, what, what do you, you kind of answered it there too, but just like, what can you learn from watching them compete with each other and, and try to take over a team midway through a season? All did, from responding to this challenge, what can you learn about them? Well, every single day is like an interview, right? When you come to practice and, and you're building up a football team, you know, you find out a lot about guys as to how they show up, everything from attitude, body language, demeanor, work ethic, effort, right? Effort in the classroom, effort to put an extra time to watch film. So uh, we're, we're always watching for that because you want to create a DNA in your program that's unbreakable, one that is always looking to be a high achiever, to better themselves and everyone around them. So, and I feel that from both, you know, um, both Jake and Jakari, you know, uh, they uh, both those guys have done really well. They're just like Tyler, you know. I think that quarterback room is not only a talented, it's also has the right kind of people. Next, we'll go to Luke Cheney from All Hurricanes. Luke. Hey, Coach. I was just wondering about Don Cheney and if you think he's going to make a return at some point this season. I do. He practiced yesterday, and uh, it was limited. But he did move around and looked like he was moving around about as, you know, as close to full speed as he can be. Um, but because, again, his, his injury was a real one, one that he has recovered from and doing really, really well. So we do. We expect him to play at some point in time here in the next few weeks. Our last question for Coach Cristobal today comes from Christopher Stock of Inside the U. Chris? Yeah, Coach, I was curious with Colby Young. You know, you had the touchdowns, those big games. The last couple of games, have you seen t teams definitely on the scouting report with him and also maybe the challenge that he now has, you know, finishing strong with what he did earlier this year with the attention he has on him now? Sure, you know, he, he, uh, he certainly had some big games early. Um, he has not, you know, the targets haven't gone his way the last few games, but it's nothing that he has done or not done. Uh, certainly sometimes coverage, you know, dictates where the ball is being fed. And sometimes we just missed it, you know. So, but he is obviously a guy that we're counting on and a guy that we expect to make plays once again and help us get back in rhythm offensively. Coach Cristobal, thank you for your time and good luck on Saturday. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a good day.